let's work on multiplying and dividing fractions. Let's say I started with something like uh, a good example here. Let's say I wanted to do negative 9 elevenths times 22 twenty-sevenths. All right. Um, and I'm trying to work this out. Now, the thing I want to realize right away is I've got a negative times a positive, and I'm going to be, need to be thinking back at the end and saying, what should my sign be? Got to take the time, double check all your work. Um, I've got two good options here. I could simply multiply across, find what I can reduce by, and go from there. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that strategy. You could do 9 times 22, get a number here. 11 times 27, get a number here. Simplify everything down and get an answer. And you'd have to realize that a negative times a positive is a negative. But um, I don't like that way. It, it, it works, it gets you the right answer, but it is a lot of work. So let's, uh, this is sometimes called factoring, I call it cross-reducing. Let's look across. Look one at the denominator versus the opposite numerator. 11 and 22, they have a common factor. 11, so let's reduce that right away. 11 divided by 11 is 1. 22 divided by 11 is 2. Let's look the other way. 9 and 27, if that was a fraction 9 27 I'd divide both the top and bottom by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 27 divided by 9 is 3. Now I multiply these. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative times a positive is a negative, and I am done. If you are not yet convinced of the value of this strategy, I encourage you to work this out the long way. There is nothing wrong with doing it the wrong way, but you will notice that if you get the hang of this, it really, really makes things simpler. All right, let's do another one. Let's do negative 3 and 1 third times a negative, uh, let's go 2 and 2 fifths. All right, this will take a little more work. Uh, I realize a couple things right away. Negative times a negative, so my answer will be positive, but I'll, I'll come back to that. I'm gonna have to convert these to improper fractions. 10 thirds, negative 10 thirds, times negative 12 fifths. All right, let's do a little cross-reducing here. Um, Again, I can start here. I can start here. It doesn't matter which one you start with. But 3 and 12, well, those can both divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Let's look this way. 10 and 5, uh, both divide by 5. So there's, uh, excuse me, 10 divided by 5 is 2. It's a weird 2. Sorry about that. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And let's multiply. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 1 is 1, negative times a negative is a positive, so that looks like my answer, but we should recognize right away that 8 divided by 1 is 8. So that's kind of cool. For all of that work and those two weird mixed numbers, the answer is just positive 8. All right, let's do another one. Let's do something like uh, 4 and 5, 6 times, uh, let's just keep it simple, let's go 2 and 1 fourth and see what we get. Uh, notice I got a positive times a positive, answer is going to be positive. Um, let's convert to our improper fractions, so 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 is 9, 29, 6. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Don't ask me why I wrote that equal sign. I made a mistake. Again, since I check my work a lot throughout the problem, I caught that right away. All right, let's look what we got. 
uh, 29 and 4. Well, 4 will only divide by 2 and 4, neither of which work there. So that seems like I'm stuck. Uh, 6 and 9 will vo both divide by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And uh, that looks like all I can do. So let's see here. Uh, 29 times 3. I believe that is 87. Maybe I should check that just to be sure. 7, 2, 2, 6. Yep, 87. Checks out. Always worth it to do the extra work if you're not sure. 2 times 4 is 8. Positive times a positive. I'm still positive. Uh, this simplifies down, I believe, to 10 and 7 eighths. But you know what? Let's do the work real quick. Let's make sure we're right there. 87 divided by 8. 8 goes into 8 one time. It's 0, 7. Uh, 8 will not go into 7, so it's 0. I got a remainder of 7, 10, and 7 eighths. Sweet. So multiplication with uh, cross-reducing, really not too bad. You just got to pay attention. Make sure you're really watching those signs, looking back at your work. Am I still lined out and taking your time? Let's divide because it's really not that much harder. Let's do 2 thirds divided by a negative, uh, whoops, a negative, uh, I don't know, 5 sixths. All right. All right. I got some work to do here. Dividing fractions. Remember, you end up doing multiplying by the reciprocal of the second number, the reciprocal. I don't know if you remember that, but a reciprocal is simply this. The reciprocal of 5 sixths is 6 fifths. I just flip the numbers upside down. So here's what I really got. The first number stays the same. I multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal just means I flip these numbers upside down. The fraction is still negative. This negative stays with the top number. It stays a negative. This is now negative 6 fifths instead of negative 5 sixths. Well, let's get an answer. Okay, check if I can cross reduce 2 and 5. Eh, that doesn't work. Can't divide that by 2. 3 and 6 works. I can divide them both by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Multiply 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 5 is 5. Positive times a negative is a negative. And I have successfully divided fractions. Done some cross-reducing, cross made my life a lot easier. All right. Let's try one more. Let's try some mixed numbers. Let's try 8 and 1. Uh, Let's go 1 and 8, 6. Let's go a negative divided by a negative 2 and let's pick something odd here, 3 fifths. Don't know how this is going to turn out. We, we will wait and see. Um, actually, you know what? As I think about that problem, change it. Let's go to 4 fifths. All right. Uh, I got negative divided by a negative. I know my answer is going to be positive, but we'll come back to that. Let's get our improper fractions. Uh, this will be 6 times 8, 48, plus 1 is 49. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. All right, it's still a negative, just kind of clean things up. Uh, multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 49, 6 times negative 5 fourteenths. See if we can cross reduce anything. 6 and 5 do not. I can't get anything, a multiple of 5 into 6. But I can do 14 and 49. Those both divide by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 
49 divided by 7 is 7. All right. Let's multiply a negative times a negative. I got a negative for my answer. Um, excuse me. A negative times a negative is a positive. I'm sorry. I misspoke. 7 times 5 is 35. So 35 twelfths is my answer, but I really should go to a mixed number. 12 will go into 35 twice. Leave me a remainder of 11. All right. Uh, last example. Let's just take a minute here and do it. Let's go with something really wild. Uh, let's go with 3 fourths times negative 11 twelfths times 4 thirds. All right. Well, it is multiplication. I can work left to right. Um, I see some things here that look pretty good of this 3 and 12. They would factor out. They would cross-reduce the first time around. But uh, I'm going to use a strategy here because I like to avoid work. I am multiplying everything, meaning I can do it in any order. I'm going to switch those two numbers around and watch what happens. Oops. Started writing it wrong after I said what I was going to do. Four thirds. And now I'm going to work left to right, and lo and behold, look what happened. I've got a pair of threes to cross reduce. Three divided by three is one. Three divided by three is one. Four divided by four is one. Four divided by four is one. Multiply everything across. 1 times 1 times 11 is 11. 1 times 1 times 12 is 12. Positive times a positive is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. And all of a sudden, that terrible looking problem became much, much easier. I've got a second here. Let's address for just a second. Um, exponents, let's do uh, four-fifths to the second power. We need to be able to realize that that is four-fifths times four-fifths. I'm going to check if anything will cross-reduce. Four and five, nope. Four and five, nope. Sixteen, twenty-fifths. And I know I went through that last example pretty quick. We don't do a lot with that in this course, but it is worth talking about.